Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY, that's 467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly on behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas. 21 plus age and eligibility varies by jurisdiction. Void in New Hampshire, Oregon, and Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. For additional terms and responsible gaming resources, see dkng.co slash football. All right, everyone, welcome again to Bear Bets, presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Score big with DraftKings Sportsbook, the best place to bet touchdowns. Download the DK Sportsbook app. Use that code BEARBETS. That's the code BEARBETS, two words. New customers to get $200 in bonus bets. What's going on, everybody? I'm your host, Bear, Chris Felica. Joined again by Jess Schwartz. Will Hill, John Murray will join us in a couple of minutes here for the gambling group chat. So we are... Uh, it feels like we're longer into the season than we are, but four, four weeks. Seventeen. Well, that's actually, we're not even we're not even a quarter of the way through. There's eighteen weeks spare. Eighteen weeks. There's Seventeen games. Seventeen games. Eighteen weeks. Yeah, we have a long yeah, way to go a here. Long, long, a long <laughs> way to go. But uh, I guess one of the one of my favorite things to do at this time of the year is to just kind of take a step back and, and reassess where we might be yeah. with, with with certain wagers and. Uh, are there still bets to be made, whether it's been in an awards market or uh, the wins markets? And, and I think this is probably probably a good time to, based on what we see for teams' health, what we see for teams maybe getting guys back. Yeah. Or suppose they're getting guys back, not going to get them back. Um, so you, you can bet these win totals everywhere. But, I mean, there there are opportunities here right now, I think, with certain teams to to maybe hop in, like a team like the Dolphins. <laughs> now their season win total seven and a half. Yeah. I saw them uh, the other night. They are not a good football team, and it, you know, Tua is what what Tua is. He's fine, but they have no chance on offense uh, w- without him at quarterback. This is there's they were uh, I think lined at ten and a half before the year. I went under that, and and right now I think I would take a look still at under seven and a half because I I don't know at the point in the year where they could get Tua back. Is it worth risking him getting injured again no. when you really have no shot at making the playoffs? No. I, I have under eight and a half and under seven and a half. I have both. Um, I think that as soon as he got hurt, that was the end of their season. I, I never believed the talking point, or at least the news out there, that he was seeking a specialist and sort of trying to come back, right? Like, that was the idea. To seek a specialist. I think you it, have it, to do that publicly, I think. Why? 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 I mean, you can. You're going to seek a specialist. But I think very clearly, if they're at the point where he comes back off an of injured reserve and they're two and six, why would you play him? They, they lost another defensive end, Jalen Phillips, out for the season. I don't think Chubb's even back yet. So I can't really rush the passer. Offensively, what you have all these great weapons who can't get the ball, and you know this, Bear. I, I don't, I would not blame Tyreek Hill or Waddle or any of these guys who get upset about the situation, but we're going to start seeing visible anger from those wide receivers about the lack of catches, the lack of production, all those things. It's not their fault no. that Tua got hurt. We're going to start seeing that. So I just think the Dolphins are in a, a situation where they're they're not going to win. And we, we talked about this to start the season, Bear. There was an opportunity to wager on the Dolphins. Uh, at some point, they're under win total because their schedule, this was the easy part of their schedule right. before they get in the back half of their schedule where the, the last six games are the Packers, Jets, Texans, Niners, Browns, and Jets. Like I was going to take their under win total at, right before that stretch. And you would have thought you would have been getting yes. nine and a half or ten and a half still. Yeah, basically. maybe even eleven and a half if they had started like they did last season. So, um, look, they still have uh, you know, they, they got the Patriots this week. They're at Indianapolis, Cardinals, Bills. I mean, there's winnable games, but that last six games, Bear. I mean, if they go two and four during that stretch, I'd be surprised. Yeah, it, it, we're looking good there with all the uh, the Dolphins unders, which which I think is very likely to hit another team, which. Their season win total before the year was 10 and a half, and now it's down to eight and a half because, again, this was their easy part of the schedule with the Jets and losing to Denver. And now you've got a Minnesota team, which is much better 
than what people thought. I mean, the Jets would have been favored in this game prior to the year. Now they're yeah. a dog this week. Two and a half. The Jets win totals eight and a half. Uh, and again, you've got Steelers on the road, and the Steelers are better than what, what I think we thought. You've got Houston. You've got Arizona, who, I mean, they looked okay at times. Seattle, later in the year, they've been better at times. you still got the two against uh, Miami, and Jacksonville certainly isn't as good as what we thought, and the Rams aren't as good. So it does look like there are some opportunities still to pick up some wins. Eight and a half, are, are you, are you uh, maybe an opportunity to buy low, or are you worried about maybe the Jets long-term with uh, the, the coaching staff and maybe Rodgers' injury did not look good last week he looked just like he was really struggling to move and hopefully he's better this week but just I, the, the, the mojo the mojo yeah. is not I, feeling very good right now if you're a Jets packer a Robert Sala coach team is going to get zero money from me in, in any direction <laughs> I'm just telling you like I, they, they just they're not well coached and I hope it doesn't rain at all bear the rest of the season because oh, no. I, I would I would hate for the rain to be blamed for a yeah, loss it never rains Look, in, in England either yeah it never rains in Austin Stadium either um I nice was, helmet, by the way. Thank you. Yeah, the helmets are here. Yeah, thank you, Kenny. <laughs> Equipment department uh, doing a good job. I just, all, my, by the way, I know this is an NFL podcast. My entire last week and next week will just, I'm just focused on the Ohio State game. Every day, I'm just thinking about oh, things. I'm just thinking about week, like everything. Great week that, of college yeah. football. Um, so I I, uh, I have nothing on the Jets bear because I, there's dysfunction already after a month. Rodgers calling out sort of the coaching staff, the offensive line. Gary wasn't calling out the coaching staff. Are they training for Devontae Adams? Defensively, they're good, but not as good as last season, I don't think, which, again, happens typically. Right. There's a lot of variance on defense year to year. Um, what happens if they lose this game? Now they're two and three this weekend. Yep. You got Buffalo. You got Buffalo coming up. Now you're two and four. Like I I, I would lean under, but I'm not putting a cent on the Jets, Bear. I'm, I'm just not doing it. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not getting In either direction, by the way. Not, I'm, not, I'm not getting involved in this uh, either, just because I do have some uh, – some Jets futures that probably aren't going to hit, but it is what it is. Uh, I got a better number here on the Bengals. Uh, next team we kind of have queued up here. Uh, their, their total is eight and a half. I got them uh, nine and a half or so. So, I, I don't know. The Bengals defense certainly yeah. has, some, has some woes. Tough schedule, too. And, and I think part of the discussion is they haven't played a division game yet. They will this weekend. And Joe Burrow just hasn't been as good against division opponents in his career. Um, the Browns especially, which is which is odd. Uh, but we'll talk about later the, the Ravens game where his record is against them. Um, I would probably lean under here with the defensive problems. They're really good on offense this year, though. Like they're they're coming on offense, but if you can't stop anyone, every game becomes a, a coin toss, right, Bear? Um, so I would lean under I, nothing from me because I I do respect Joe Burrow. Um, I've seen him obviously. Maybe it's a little bit of my my, my 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 my, my fandom my fandom here. But look, if they beat the Ravens this weekend. Then I think Giant you feel Browns. good. They're going to go over. Like, like that, that's part of it, right? Like this game this weekend might determine whether or not they're they're over under their win total, their adjusted win total. Yeah, you got you still got two against the Browns. Who knows what the Browns are going to be? You got the Ravens, uh, you got the Titans, two with the Steelers. You got Denver at home. Still feels doable. It does feel doable under if, or if over? over if over. They, if they win this week. It, if they win this week, it's I think it's certainly doable. If they lose, I don't think so. Yeah, Lou, Lou is nine and four the rest of the way. Yeah. like that. That's extremely no. uh, difficult to, um, to to pull off. The, another team which really didn't see a big adjustment uh, was the Steelers. I mean, they they were eight, they were eight and a half before the year. Uh, they were even eight and a half even with the three and zero start. Now they're now they're nine and a half uh, off of the loss last week. Uh, in Indy, where they where they could have won, and, and that's probably a little bit of a reflection. A because the defense, I think, is better than we thought. Justin Fields has been better than what we thought, and the division just hasn't been yeah. as good as what we thought because the the Bengals are struggling and the Browns are bad as well. I mean, I don't know if I I don't know if I'd yeah. want to get, <clears throat> well, get, I, get involved here. I did get I did get involved with an over eight and a half to get off of my season with yeah. Lily, just because I was like, look, it's an opportunity just me to get off it pretty cleanly. Yeah. And I did, but, but the fact if it, if it is nine and a, nine and a half, I'd be, I'd be tempted to uh, over or under to go under. I would, so, be, I would be tempted well, to go under uh, just because it's still an yeah. offense that's going to struggle. And 
Can I give you the point of their schedule? I think you wager you wager on the on, on the under. You ready? November seventeenth. Uh, that or right before they play the Commanders, which is the week before. Uh, so right now it's cow it's Cowboys, Raiders, Jets, Giants. Next four games, they go. Let let let's say they split that. Right, they'll be six and two split, at that point. And, and split. I mean, is, I mean, I mean, I mean, five and three. Five five and three. If they split the next four games, they could go three and one. They could go three and one. So if they're six and two. Then they have Commanders, Ravens, Browns, Bengals, Browns, Eagles, Ravens, Chiefs, Bengals. I mean, the last four games: Eagles, Ravens, Chiefs, Bengals. Uh, I mean, I, I think that's when you might take the under before the play. If the Commanders are still playing the way they are, heading into that Commanders game, and, and you're probably looking at the total going up to a ten, ten and a half, probably and, if they are, and if they are six, and they take the under then. Heading into the alley, we get that. That's certainly a uh, a possibility yeah. as well. But yeah, those are just some some options out there. I mean, certainly look around at your your favorite sports books to figure out what way you want to um, attack these. And like I said, last year we got some great prices on some some mid season awards and some great prices on some win totals. Uh, so th- these these things are they're, they're bets always to be had during the season. Like, we got the flack. We got Flacco. Whatever he was, hundred to one last yeah. year, comeback player of the year late in the year. Uh, Lamar Jackson was like double digits late mid- yeah. midway through the year for MVP. Like, just don't get caught prisoner yeah. of the moment right now with seeing that Mahomes or Josh Allen yeah. are uh, favored to, to to win certain awards because I think there are a lot a lot of the only the only award I would feel pretty good about right now would be Jaden Daniels being yeah. the offensive rookie of the year. Can, can I give you one last win total Oops. that I think is uh, is still – I'm surprised. So, it's juiced to minus 135 on DraftKings Sportsbook right now, but the Patriots under five and a half wins. Where are six wins on – we're five more wins on their schedule. They're one and three right now. They cannot score the ball. I mean, I guess if Drake May comes back or doesn't come back but plays Bear, maybe, maybe that's the – they get more wins, but are, are we are we finding five more wins on their schedule? Let's say Dolphins this week. Let's say they win that game. Where, where the where the where are three more? Excuse me, four more wins on their you, schedule. Could you beat Jacksonville and London. Well, I mean, sure you could. You're going to be a, a at least a field goal underdog, right? You got you got the Rams. You got okay. the Colts. You got Tennessee and Chicago. I don't think it's impossible to get to, the Patriots will be six six. It's six wins with their with their offense right now. Their offense right now. Let's see. Uh, let's calculate the points scored. Sixteen twenty. Three and thirteen. I'm not good at math. It's not a lot of points, Bear. They very easily could have beaten Seattle. Well, they didn't, so that helps. No, they didn't. <laughs> I don't know. They've gotten worse, by the way. Like they started sort of fast because I think no one knew what they are. Their center now is out for a while, maybe out for the season. Yeah, might be out for the years. So, look, it's it's not good right now. So I just that's what I'm, I'm eyeing. I think I actually have their alt win total of like under three and a half. So yeah, I have an I have an under four and a half from before the year as well. And oh no, I have Pat's fewest wins. Uh, is what I have. Is what I have. We'll see. I also, have Patriots I, I don't, under I don't, points. I don't think they're very good. I think offensively they're terrible. I, I I would feel pretty good the rest of the way about playing a lot of unders in their games. Oh yeah, just because their offense isn't going to score, and I think that defense will play well for Gerard Mayo as as long as as long as they can before they totally get discouraged late in the year when they realize their their offense can't score. But it should be an under. I agree. It should be an under. But again, Titans quarterback situation is bad. The Rams, who knows what, what they're going to be by that point in the year. Dolphins, like we said, could could be a, uh, a disaster. So I would lean with you under, though. I, I agree. I, I, would, I, would, I would, if I had to play, yeah. I, I would do that. But speaking of playing... We're going to get some more advice on playing this week from our uh, gambling group chat co-hosts here. Will Hill, John Murray from Superbook will join Jeff and I right now. Gambling group chat. Gambling group chat is back NFL style once again. Myself and Jeff joined by Will Hill, and we welcome John Murray back. John, sorry about last week. We figured we'd throw Sammy P a little bone. He was able to do it on Wednesday. We recorded a day early. So we just we just wanted to make Sammy P feel, feel good, which I'm sure you're, you're okay with, right? How was his performance, you guys? How did he do? Uh, we said there was, there was a two point adjustment from John to Sammy. Right, we didn't say what right. direction it went, though. Okay, <laughs> that makes sense. That sounds about right. Sam Sam's pretty solid. I do another show with him on Fridays, where we both have to come up with an NFL pick, which is not easy. No. And Sam is four and zero. Wow! Wow! This season, so no pressure. We'll tape that show tomorrow morning. He'll try to go five and zero. That's tough, man. Picking winners in the NFL. 
is not for the faint of heart, man. It's hard. No, it's been a very dog-oriented year so far with a lot of those big dogs winning outright and covering. So this week, what, what – who do we who do we have on um, on buys this week? We got the, the Chargers are on a buy. I think the Eagles are on a buy, right? Um, so a few the Lions Lions are, are, are on a Lions are on a buy as well. But uh, we do have we do have NFL football tonight. Uh, Falcons Bucks down there in um, in Atlanta, right? It is in Atlanta, right? It is in Atlanta. It is in Atlanta. It is. Yeah, well, point, Falcons one and a half, forty three and a half. Uh, in the, the being the Bucks, we kind of talked about it last week. Jeff, I, we, we like them against the Eagles. We don't like the direction of this Eagles team with all the injuries, and they came out and kicked the crap out of the Eagles. But going on the road here, kind of, a, I think we have like seven or eight games this week in the NFL, all a field goal or less. So uh, good luck with your survivor. Good luck with your uh, your, your last man standing, or whatever contest, your, your survivors, your uh, your super contest, uh, whatever, whatever you're in, good luck this week, John. Starting tonight, I, I can't imagine there's there's much uh, play in either direction on this one tonight. I can't I can't imagine there's a consensus on this, is there? Yeah, you're not hearing a lot about this game, honestly. Right now, we got Atlanta minus one and a half. Total's forty three and a half. The total has come down a little bit this week, but really, I'd have to say so far. I guess this is week five, so. Of the five Thursday night games, probably the most likely bet one we've seen this season. I don't think people really know what to do with this game. Don't really know what to do with these two teams. Well, you got yeah. These Thursday night unders have been pretty good here. I mean, Tampa Bay plays at a really slow pace and third slowest pace in the league, and it didn't help the under last week because they just went up and down the field on Philly. But these Thursday night games have been kind of clunky. We saw it last week with Dallas, New York. Which boy, my goodness, I think they're still throwing. Uh, I think they're still throwing penalty flags in that game. So division games usually trend under. Tampa plays slow. There's some familiarity. Uh, being leaned towards the under. I guess I would pick Atlanta to win. But keep in mind, though, uh, one and a half or so with the line. Atlanta's game, and John knows this, Atlanta's got a, a habit for playing a lot of these games that land on like one or two where they uh, have these short spreads where they win, but they don't cover. I don't know if there's any rhyme or reason to it. Last week was another example where that landed on two. They're laying two and a half, and they uh, you, you had to sweat out the old uh, lateral play from the Saints <laughs> late, later on in that game on in that last play. But um, it, it would be a lean towards the under, Jeff. Yeah, that, that the last week was a good example of obviously finding the, the best of the number, right? If you had Atlanta minus one and a half early in the week, you, you cashed. If you had Atlanta minus two and a half, you, you did not cash that game. So uh, the NFL, it's very important, right, to find the best of the number uh, in those situations. I, th I think the contest was two and a half. So I think, you know, you're out there. You, you have an L in a game. I think this game tonight, guys, these teams are, are pretty even in my opinion. Their they're advanced stats are about the same. Their quarterbacks, I think, can do the same sort of things. They have both have weapons. They both do certain things well. So to me, it's a stay away game. Uh, maybe something live at some point if one team gets up early with a big lead. Will I've been doing the uh, the the uh, live passing attempts over for some of these uh, games where I think a quarterback's going to throw a lot in the second half of a game. That's the sort of way I would look at this game. Yeah, this this feels like if I'm betting something pre game, it it would be uh, under for me. And then, like I said, I'll. Re react to what's going on during the during the flow of the game. So not only do we have the Thursday game tonight, we have the first London game of the year. Uh, the, the Jets at against the Vikings in, in London at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium where Liverpool were robbed early last year with a, a, a ter couple of terrible calls, but John and I don't need to rehash that. Uh, the footing has been an issue there at, at, at that stadium in a lot of these games, and it was an issue going on for like even the, uh, the the prem season so we'll see how the field conditions are we'll see how the footing is uh vikings are two and a half over the jets total of around 40 or so uh john i just wonder depending on the result of this game if uh if my guy mr clean and i can't hack it might be left on the tarmac over at heathrow <laughs> nice job pro barring in that liverpool reference there bear very good uh very good stuff you know, Minnesota is probably the team that surprised us the most this year, guys. We we were taking sharp money on Minnesota under their win total all summer. Hmm. And now they come out, they're 4-0, they're favored in this game. But I will tell you, we, we had a very respected player come in yesterday, Wednesday, took the Jets plus 2.5 at even money. And he, we moved the line to Minnesota minus 2. So some, some very sharp, respected play on your and Will's New York Jets coming that, off of a, a game they should have won against yes, Denver uh, yes. last Sunday. They, they obviously should have won that. Very good for me, though, guys. Uh, I'm, I'm going to make this about myself. Please do. I was very happy to see your Jets lose because 
I didn't have the Jets in Survivor, and I do have the Broncos over wins. That was a delightful result for me. Sorry. Are, are, are you still alive in Survivor? Yeah, yeah, I've got a, I've got a couple of entries live in, in the in the big Survivor contest mm. in Vegas. So it was, and we did, and the only reason we didn't have the Jets on one of them is because we'd used the Jets on both of them the week before when, yep. they, when they beat, I guess they beat New England. So that that's the thing about Survivor. There's so much luck involved. There, there's no way that we wouldn't have used the Jets on either entry if we had them available to us, but we didn't. They lost, and and that was great for us. Yeah, I, I know, I know the, I know the, 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 up the reboot Survivor pool on the, on your your splash site where you and Kelly have the college Survivor. Uh, they did the reboot with like something like 1,100, 1,200 people joined it, and they're down to like seventy now. So it, it's a. Uh, it, it, it's been some carnage there, but yeah, I, I I'm, alive. I'm alive in that one as well with, with one entry. Don't know who I'm going to use this week, but I was going to ask you actually, if when you, before you had answered kind of the question already, if people might be holding out for a three with the jets, if you thought uh, it was going to get there, but apparently you, you don't think threes are going to pop, right? I don't think so. I mean, the, the, the group that played the jets in this game, the, the London game on Sunday morning, they usually move the market and they, I'd be very surprised that the market went the other way against them. I don't think you're going to see a three. Maybe you play the Jets in a teaser. Still a very good teaser spot. I don't like betting these London games, though, guys. I don't either. I don't. I mean, I don't. I don't really trust uh, the fields out there. I think we talked about that a few weeks ago. We were talking about the the Eagles and the Packers game, which was in Brazil. But same concept, right? <laughs> the field came into play. So I'll probably stay away from this game. But the sharp guys are on the Jets here. Yeah, I mean, if you were playing this game a week ago, a couple weeks ago, Jets would be favored by a couple points. Now they're two-and-a-half-point dogs. That's usually not the way to go is to just jump on these five-point line movements the other way and, and overreact. That being said, what really hurt the Jets and Rodgers last week was the blitz. Denver, and Denver's got an underrated defense, by the way, but Denver blitz Rodgers coming off the bus, and he did not look good. I think he got a hit sometime in, like, the second quarter where he just didn't move well from that point forward. And now you got Flores, who's going to blitz you just as much, if not more. I don't like that from a matchup standpoint here, Bear, with uh, with the fact that Flores, who you you and I agree, uh, assistant coach of the year, and if they voted today, he'd win. Uh, unfortunately for your ticket, there's a, a long way to go. But uh, I just think from a matchup standpoint, this is dicey. And Minnesota, boy, it, it looks for real. I know it's Sam Darnold, and I'm skeptical. We're all skeptical. But they're, they got Addison back. They're going to get TJ Hawkinson back. They're good on defense. They're good offensive line. I don't. I, I like to sit here and poke holes, and the obvious one is Darnold, and he hasn't done it his whole career. But, man, he's surrounded with a hell of a team there. Season win total adjusted up to 11 and a half now, which Crazy. it seems a, a little high. I mean, it was funny. John was talking about the, a lot of money coming in on the the. Viking season win total at, during the summer during the summer under, I actually played them over because I, I thought the way their their schedule broke down early on that they had an opportunity to to, to win some games and they had some pieces so uh, that was one of the uh, the NFL calls actually early on at least that I've been been right on it, it feels like the Jets to the right side here though Jeff I I don't know if I can do it just for all the reasons we talked about with uh, Rogers health potentially uh, the, the line the, the blitzing from Flores the travel. Uh, I, I, but but it feels like yeah. the jet to the or, or it's jets are passed for me. Uh, to John's point, I don't think I've ever wagered on a London game. I just I just think those standalone games and overseas are not the best to, to wager on. Um, the Vikings are very sustainable because the quarterback is in a Shanahan offense with a good offensive line, a good running back, Jefferson, a good defense. Now is he going to win the MVP? I, I don't know. But this is the time to bet the Jets, right? Off a bad loss like this. But I will caution you because I think this is a real problem. Nate Hackett is not a good offensive coordinator. And Garrett Wilson is already calling him out after four games. Like they have problems, I think, offensively with trying to figure out the best way to get all these weapons involved. We we saw Sertan sort of not take out Wilson, but make it more difficult for him for him for him to get the ball last week. And what becomes of the offense? Is Garrett Wilson still engaged with the offense when he's calling out the OC after four games? Nate Hackett's not good. He's never been a good off, off, offense corner. It makes no sense why he's there. So that's my only caution about wagering on the Jets is you have sort of a disgruntled wide receiver bear and a bad offensive coordinator put together. I, I don't like that. What what could possibly go wrong, right? 
Yeah. It rained last week, though. Salah was very quick yep, to blame. Exactly. So I don't know if the NFL is going to count this game in the standings because it rained it's last true. week. He was very quick after the game to say, hey, look, I know our offense is good, but it was rainy. So I don't know if that if those wagers get refunded because the rain. It, it, it only rained when the Jets had the ball, right? It, 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 yes. it, stopped, it stopped when the when Den- Denver had it. it. I mean, it clipped. Bo Nix is only negative seven yards passing in the third. I was going to say, yeah, the fact that Bo Nix had one completion <laughs> for positive yards in the first half, and somehow they they found a way to to win the game. So, yeah, I, I think I think we're probably it's funny all those all those uh, first head coach to be fired tickets. We thought maybe uh, we were looking at Peterson when we were looking at Sirianni. It, it, Jets lose this game. I mean, the Jets, the Jets rarely make an in-season coaching change, but it, it could happen here because it's... Well, you don't think they'd give them the Buffalo game? Because no, Buffalo's he, after this, I think, right? Yeah. But, no, but, but, but here's the problem, Bear. If you fire Solo, who's the coach? That's is, the is thing. Nate Hackett? But that's the thing. Uh, old Jeff Holbrook? <laughs> I, I, I guess. <laughs> like, that's the problem. If you fire him, what do you what do? You do? It might get to a point where you have to, but look, they might trade for Devontae Adams. Oh, By the time you listen to this, maybe it's done. That'll, I don't think it's going to be done. Um, that might that'll solve everything. I know, right? That, that'll add maybe a little bit of juice for a couple of weeks, but um, I just don't think this team is coached very well. And that reflects in in, in how they play each weekend. The Vikings are coached very well. Now, that doesn't mean that one team's going to cover or not cover in a game, but um, when you have sort of a coaching advantage, a scheme advantage, you know, one team will be prepared. Yeah, it's tough to to win those games. But uh, I think it is ugly, but, but maybe Jets are nothing. Uh, Ravens off the big win last week, absolutely blew out. Buffalo on Sunday night just come totally a uh, dominant performance. The Bengals got kind of right in, in beating up on on Carolina. Uh, now th- th- is, again, this looks like the classic NFL spot. You ne- you're never going to get the same thing, same team, two weeks in a row. Uh, Ravens laying two and a half at Cincinnati, high total forty nine and a half. It's Bengals or Bengals or pass for me, John. Right. I don't know, guys. Look, I, I still have some sharp money on Baltimore early in the week here. If you put a gun in my head and asked me who I think of the best team in the NFL is, I probably would say Baltimore. So I, I don't I don't know how quickly I'd be rushing to back the Bengals who have struggled at home this season. They lost to Washington. They lost to New England. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I'd back Cincinnati here, Bear. Okay. Baltimore is really good. They just need uh, they need Coach Harbaugh to not take his foot off the gas and just let the team do their thing. But I, I think the Ravens might be the best team in the NFL right now. Well, have, have, before well before you hop in, have you made any adjustments, John, in AFC and Super Bowl markets with with the Ravens, especially considering yeah. the the Rasheed Rice injury now for the Chiefs? We you know we tried not to overreact too much when Baltimore was zero and two, so we never got too high with the Ravens. Because we could, well, for one thing, because the Bengals were also 0 and 2. And even though Pittsburgh was off to a good start, we considered those two teams to be the class of that division. Now, if, I don't even, does it even matter who's hurt for Kansas City as long as they have Mahomes and the coaching staff? I, I, I'm not sure if that even makes any difference, to be honest with you. It's not because of Rice being hurt, but we are being careful with Baltimore because we do think that they're just as good as every other team. But you know what, guys? Nobody ever bets the Ravens. In the future books. I mean, I, I feel like every year when we get to the playoff bracket and we look at our positions, we're like, oh, gosh, we hope the Ravens win because <laughs> they're they're just a team that no one bets ever. Um, I don't know why that is, because they're one of the best teams every year. I think they're the best team in the league right now, but we're not we're not too worried about Baltimore futures. Does it matter that Joe Burrow's one and four against the Ravens and they've been sort of uncompetitive in a lot of those games. I don't know if that matters for this season, but they sort of have the Bengals number right now, right? And and the Bengals are not as good. They have a bunch of defense injured. I think you have to look at the injury report in this game to figure out um, sort of where the Bengals are defensively. Because if they can't, if they're down to their, you know, backup defensive tackles and Hendrickson got beat up last game, like they, if you can't affect the Ravens offensive line, you're not going to stop them. And you have to hope to put a point. The Bengals offense this year has been really good, guys. But this does feel like if it was three, it'd feel better to take. At two and a half, I, I don't know, Bear. I, I'm worried about sort of the ownage that the Ravens have on the Bengals. And, and then the, the Bengals certainly have had difficulty stopping the running. The running. We were talking, somebody mentioned offensive player of the year. Like, where, where does Derrick Henry fit in the offensive player of the year? I mean, I, I wasn't how much he had left in the tank, Will. But uh, he's been great so far. And uh, we'll see if they can keep him healthy and going and fresh throughout the year. 
Yeah, that tank, uh, that tank never seems no. to empty because I thought maybe a couple of years ago, big back like that, you know, power back takes a lot of contact. Those guys usually don't age well once you get to even like late twenties. But man, he is uh, he is certainly built differently. And the speed once he gets going, I saw he hit like twenty miles an hour. That Tyree Hill type speed on that run, it's just it's ridiculous. Uh, Jeff kind of hinted at it. I like the over. I think this Bengal offense is getting back on track. They finally got a, a week or two with Chase and with Higgins. They're clicking. I think Baltimore, if they have some flaws, if, if they do, it's on the defensive side of the ball, especially in the secondary. So Baltimore's probably gonna, or since he's probably going to get their 24, 28 points or so. And I don't think they can stop Baltimore. So to me, this is a back and forth type of game. I know it's hard to to, to go over these high totals, especially in the NFL now with the uh, you know the way they play defense and long methodical drives. But to me, this has last team with the ball written all over it in a I don't know like a 28, 24, 31, 28 type of game. I think we're going to see a lot of points here. Uh, I think the Bengals are uh, just a good over team, and, and I do like the over here. Yeah, we, we've seen a two two and a half point line move. Uh, towards the over open to 47 and now you're looking at uh, 49 49 and a half is basically uh, where we're at here so probably still feeling yet yeah, 28 24 is a very likely kind of final score there so I, I can i can get with you there on that one so now we're time for the uh, super six sponsored by DraftKings sportsbook uh, game involved this week is the cardinals and the niners and the super six question is going to be is uh, what will the result of the big game of the game be? What will the result of the game be if I can actually get it out in English for the first time? Uh, Niners to win by eight points or more, or Arizona to uh, to cover the number as well. Uh, Niners right now looking like uh, in the actual betting world, we're looking Niners minus seven is where it is in most spots. Uh, total is up to 50 now in a couple of places, including DraftKings 49 and a half uh, with you, John. I actually like the. Uh, the Niners team total over here is how I played this oh, game. Man. Uh, be, be, uh, you, you like that, Will? Stop stealing my thunder, man. Yeah, I'll just move on to the next game. Now, go ahead, John. <laughs> Arizona's, <laughs> Arizona's defense is is just as bad as we thought they'd be. This and, and that's the thing. And the Niners have the short week next week going <laughs> to Seattle. So I could see them maybe getting up big in this game. And then they, maybe, the, maybe the Cardinals, who were non-competitive last week against uh, uh, Washington, getting a couple points late. But, uh, Niners uh, outside of CMC are getting pretty healthy. So you said you have the Ravens number one right now. Do you have do you have the Niners two or the Chiefs two, John? Uh, it's a it's a mix of those three teams. Uh, the Niners, when healthy, are just as good as anybody else. Obviously, um, that's a good question. I, I don't trust Kansas City, so I think I'd probably put 49ers ahead of Kansas City. Yeah, if you just there was a time when Arizona played well in this matchup against the 49ers, like 2018, 19, 20. They they would, you know, win a lot of these games when it was um Kingsbury, but that is long ago. If you look at the last four or five matchups, uh the points scored for San Francisco and it plays to your team total over bear, it's 45, 35, 38, 38. Uh I, I think the San Francisco team total over is the only way I'd play this year. To John, does your does your power rankings change if McCaffrey doesn't play this season? He you now double Achilles tendon issues. Went to Germany to get some treatment. Probably some some uh, you know some stem cells, some PRP there. If, let's say he's he doesn't play this year or plays a little bit and is out for the postseason because he gets hurt again. Does that change your your power rankings on on the Niners at all? A little bit, Jeff. Not not a whole lot, though. I mean, I know McCaffrey's a great player. And I know he won Offensive Player of the Year and all that, but he's still only a running back. So, I, I mean, you're backs. probably talking about half a point, maybe one point at the very most. I don't I don't know how much it, it, it matters. I know that sounds crazy because he's a great player. I don't mean to be disrespectful to him. I have a lot of respect for him as a player, but – I don't think it makes as much of a difference as the as the general public would think it does. I mean, Jordan Mason has 447 yards already this season on 91 carries. Like the run game has not missed has not missed a beat. And look, I mean, their offensive line's gotten a little bit better, which is important for not having McCaffrey there. And look, I I thought when we've seen the splits of Purdy without McCaffrey in the past versus and it was a big difference. This year seems to have been mitigated, but Purdy's playing much better football right now, just in, in totality without his weapons. And we saw, I think, last season, Barry, he's playing some good football. I made an MVP bet on him this week at 18 to 1. And now he's down to 14, 14 to 1. I know Will. Market and mover. I, we, were, we were about wow. this uh, during the week. It was funny. We, we were texting. I can't remember if it was Monday, if it was Sunday. I'm laying there late and 
and, and like texted you and, and our, our other buddies, like, should we be betting Purdy MVP at 18 to one? Because uh, he's been great. He's been doing it without McCaffrey. That, that, that crutch for lack of a better word, isn't there that people can say he's Samuel's been hurt. Kittle's been hurt. Like he's been the constant. So like if they win 11 games or, or win this division, like, with so much uncertainty at the top with Mahomes and who's there, and are they going to give it to Lamar again? Uh, Josh Allen, the Bills, difficult part of the schedule is coming up. Like, pretty 18-1, to 1, and even still 14-1 to 1 seems like a really good bet, don't you think? Yeah, I mean, it's it's a pretty simple formula. It's a quarterback of a team that's going to win double-digit games, and I know they're, they're only 2-2, two and two and they let a couple games get away here, the, especially the Rams game, but they're probably going to end up with their 10, 11-plus wins, and if that's the case, uh, if they win their 11 or 12 games or whatever, Purdy's going to be in the mix because he's going to have good stats. He takes care of the ball. He's in a, a friendly system where uh, he's going to put up stats, and like you said, that narrative where, oh, it's it's all the other guys around him, that it takes a little bit of a hit. That that gets lessened by the fact that McCaffrey's already missed games. Samuel's missed time. I'm sure he's going to miss more no on him i mean these guys the kittle samuel mccaffrey they're all great but they're always all banged up so uh look we we went down this path last yes, year did. 22 to 1 we were just a, not even a good game away from cashing just a decent game a 17 14 win against baltimore on christmas night would have wrapped up that award because it was a weird year where nobody put up great yeah. numbers and we got burned and i know uh, i think both of us really didn't hedge with baltimore mm-hmm. plus nope. seven so painful memory but maybe this year we uh the, the gambling gods repay us for what was a good bet last year i think i had 22 to 1 i'm, I'm I forget what you had, but, um, but by the way, mentioning McCaffrey, I'm starting to think he wasn't questionable week one because uh, it's October and he's not going to play now until it looks like Christmas. And so, yeah, that, that questionable game uh, tag that they gave him before that Monday night game against the Jets might've, might've been a little bit misleading. No, I'm not no sure. they, 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 they might've fabricated the truth as to Lee could play limited. We, we, yeah. Yeah, he limit limited, all right. Extremely limited. As the cam matter. rising of the National Football League. The cam. Exactly. Oh, <laughs> oh sh- sorry. What are you going on that again. Sorry, I had I had to, I had to say it. I had to get it in there. Make make sure you check out the uh, the Super Six presented by DraftKings Sportsbook on the uh, Fox Sports website as well. We'll have some uh, some thoughts on the uh, on our column coming later in the week. Uh, we mentioned Josh Allen and another potential uh, NFL MVP candidate, CJ Stroud. Buffalo at Houston this week. Uh, Buffalo looking to bounce back from the beating uh, in Baltimore last week. Seems like a little bit of a disrespectful line, John, doesn't it? Bills favored by one in Houston? That was a tough spot for Buffalo last week, guys. You know, off of the short or off of the short week, a great win over Jacksonville. They got to go on the road, play Baltimore. That was a really tough spot. And Buffalo is considered right up there with those other teams we talked about, the Ravens, the Niners, the Chiefs. I'm not surprised to see them a small move from Peckham to Buffalo more. Yeah, I don't have anything in this game. I still think there's some issues, some concerns with the middle of Buffalo's defense with all the injuries they've had, linebacker, safety. Uh, you saw Baltimore really exploit that last week. And, and by the way, what was ba- Buffalo was just starting to get back into that game, and they ran that reverse. I know it's second-guessing, and you never second-guess the play when it works, but that was just a, an odd play design, and that really uh, – I mean, I don't know if Buffalo scores there. Do they get back in the game? Maybe, maybe not. But that was a, an odd play. But nothing for me on this game. Uh, I would lean towards Houston just because I don't know how good Buffalo is on defense. And I think uh, a good offensive coach uh, for uh, for Houston here can maybe exploit that. But but nothing for me, Jeff. I, I think that this is uh, Houston or, or pass here. There's a couple ways to beat Buffalo. There's really one way, right, which is that – you exploit, as, as Will mentioned, the middle of their defense that's kind of soft with injuries. Well, Houston can do that, right? They have a quarterback, and the Houston offense has not been the same as last year. Like, they're still sort of waiting to get on track. Can, you know, Va- Vaughn Miller's not playing this game. Is does Buffalo going to rush the passer? The middle of defense can be exploited by Stroud. Like, there's a way that the Texans can exploit Buffalo, sort of like Baltimore did on the flip side. Look, the Bills are still trying to find a number one wide receiver. They have some options. They don't have a reliable guy. So, again, if you're Houston with their defense, if we take away the wide receivers, what is Buffalo's offense? It becomes a very Josh Allen-centric, which is what it is at times. James so Cook has run the ball very well this he, year. He has, but you would much rather take a James Cook offense over a Josh Allen offense. Right. So, like, so I think Houston sort of has the formula. The Bills are back on the road again two weeks in a row against, uh, uh, against two of the, the top AFC teams. I think it's a tough spot for Buffalo because Houston sort of has the recipe, I think, to play this game really close where other teams just don't. There are teams that, that Buffalo is going to play that don't have the ability to, to, to take advantage of the bills weaknesses. Just move on to 
Sunday night, yeah, I, I this this is a total pass for me. I mean, I, I no result here would surprise me. I think both teams are really good, so I'm I'm, I'm just gonna to be a sit down, watch and enjoy type of game, and another sit down and watch and probably won't get to enjoy because I'm sure the my my better half will be very motivated and very intense for the Steelers hosting the Dallas Cowboys. Dallas uh, coming off of that ho hum win. Sunday, uh, Thursday night, rather, and a really just gross, ugly game that was really there for the Giants to win, but uh, Giants really couldn't get out of their own way either. Uh, Steelers, uh, two and a half, uh, 44. What was the uh, what was the look ahead line in this, John? I, I can't imagine D- Dallas was less than like a field goal favorite, were they? Oh, no, no, Dallas favored because, I mean, Pitt- Pittsburgh has really surprised us this year. I mean, go back to the summer, too. We didn't know who the Pittsburgh yep. quarterback was going to be. You know, we were thinking, I don't think a whole lot of Russell Wilson. I'm just going to tell yeah, you guys I'm, that. I'm, I'm, and, I'm in that boat so with I, you. Uh, I, uh, yeah, I mean, we, we definitely uh, – did, and then Dallas is really – I know Dallas won on Thursday in a game that I'm still so bitter about. You know, like Dallas, that game landing five was a disaster yeah. for us because – the line was going five, five and a half, five, five and a half. Everyone's laying five, taking five and a half. I even said to my boss, uh, Jay Cornegay, Bear, as we were leaving on Thursday night, well, as long as the Cowboys don't win by five, we should do pretty well in this game. <laughs> Famous last uh, words. And then, the, and, and then, you know, the Cowboys kicker, who's just a machine, who never misses, misses. And they, I'm still so upset. Seven days later, I know you're, I know the listeners love hearing the book complain. Uh, I'm, I'm still so bitter about that <laughs> game. Uh, but what was I saying? Oh, yeah, Steelers and Cowboys. Look, sharp money on the Steelers, which surprises me. Because, you know, it's it's one thing for the Steelers to be favored, which does look strange when you glance at it. But then the, to see the sharp guys that I respect lay the points, that, that I'd say is as surprising as anything I've seen in week five. Uh, tough, tough game to pick. I don't trust Dallas at all. I don't either. Their defense is lousy. I don't like the coaching staff, so I get it. But I, I was surprised to see the money coming in on Pittsburgh as a favorite. I, I think that's that's what it is, right, guys? Like we, Pittsburgh has their flaws. We know what Pittsburgh is, they, they, right? They're gonna they're gonna try to sort of run the football, play action pass, keep Justin Fields out of those must throw situations. And then defensively, they just kind of beat you up. And they had a down week in, in Indy, which I thought they would do. I was on the Colts. We talked about that game last week, Bear. Like, that felt like a, a great spot for the Colts and a, sort of a correction weekend for the Steelers. But they scored a bunch of points this game. Their offensive DVOA, guys, is, is I think, 17th, which is surprising. I think none of us thought they'd be sort of on that track with that offensive line in Justin Fields. They're, they're not that bad. And Dallas is just completely untrustworthy, Will. Like, I don't know how you can put money on Dallas in the spot looking at the way they played this season. Pittsburgh can go in there, just beat them up at the line of scrimmage and win this game. Yeah, I like the Steelers here. I think that I mean Dallas wasn't playing well on defense with their guys. Now no Parsons, no Lawrence. So what's that going to look like? That was a defense where, boy, you could run it on them. And uh, Pittsburgh, I'm sure, it's, like you said, they're going to line the line up and, and run the ball. And Fields has been decent, which look, that's all you're really looking for when you got a good defense. You're, you're only looking for decent. It's better than you could have expected when you're trading what a six round pick for them. So they've done a, a nice job managing them. And Tom went awful loss is usually a pretty good spot. He's a motivator, gets his teams up for the these type of games. So uh Barrett, it, it's a Steelers for me. I yeah, like I, I, I'm in agreement with you and the and the money that John's seen in in Vegas there. I, I like the Steelers too. I don't, I think Dallas. Uh, so I wonder. I have to take a look what the Dallas no playoff price is because I think there's a real good chance that uh, Dallas is on the outside looking in uh, on, on the playoffs there. I, I think it's a very 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 flawed team uh, as well. So uh, I'll probably be be laying it. I don't. I, this isn't going to hit three, though, right? As soon as it hit three, hits three, John, you'll get a buyback, I'm, I'm guessing. I'd be surprised if it hit three, but I, I will say the, the people that are laying two and a half are usually on the right side of the betting markets. Hmm. So I can't say I'd be shocked. And then you, when you're talking about line movement, on, you've always got to look at the, the slot the game is in for the weekend. No game has more money flowing to it in an NFL weekend than the Sunday night game. So uh, as the parlays build throughout the day Sunday, most of them will go to the Sunday night game if the books end up with a big liability to Pittsburgh, the Sunday night favorite. What you might see is books going to three after they grade those 425 Eastern, 125 Pacific games. 
That would not shock me. That happens sometimes. We grade the afternoon slate, and we go, oh, my gosh, we are buried on this favorite on Sunday Night Football. Let's move it up. Cowboys. I'm curious, John. I'm not saying this is the case in this game, but how do you know or get a sense if somebody's setting you up? Like, hey, I'm going to bet Pittsburgh. I'm going to bet Pittsburgh, and then I'm hoping to get a three, and then I'm going to come over the top here with Dallas because people do do that, right? Oh, they definitely do that. We'll, we'll talk about that a little bit when we talk about the Monday night game because I've seen a little bit of that in the Monday night football game. Yeah, it, it depends. You just have to know your customer is the best answer I can give. Yeah. We know which accounts we have that do what you're talking about. And you got to be able to sort of read the market, see what the other books around the state, around the country have, have offshore have. It, we know the, the books, or the sorry, the customers that do exactly what you're talking about. I don't, famous last words, the customers that are betting the Steelers this week are not that kind of player. I can't say that, I mean, look, we know week to week things change, but uh, the, the guys that I've seen on Pittsburgh this week are usually just playing the side they like. Cowboys 110, but by, by the way, both sides make or miss play us. So coin flip, and so you decide 110 either way. So, so, so we'll just get right to it, John, with the Monday night game. Saints at Kansas mm-hmm. City. Uh, again, shorthanded wide receiver group, five and a half, 43 and a half, opened at six and a half, down to five and a half. So are, are you seeing a little, uh, th- throw, throw a little Chiefs minus five and a half out there with some people and, and, and the, the, yeah. the, the, the big groups are coming, looking to, looking to get it to six and take it back? Well, I, I laugh when I hear about the Chiefs shorthanded receiver. I hope that Mahomes will be okay, guys. I mean, I know he he really he struggles that. It's kid. some at some okay. point it has to matter, though, right? I I don't know. I, I you you underestimate Mahomes. Good luck to you. Is all I can say. Um, no, what we're seeing in this game early in the week, talking like Sunday, Monday, a lot of money came in on the Saints, and we got as low as four and a half. Then we saw some of our most respected players lay four and a half, lay five, lay five and a half. We moved it up, and then there was take back on New Orleans. So, I, you know, Will's talking about setting up the market. I think what you're ending up with in this game is you've got dueling groups on both sides of this game. We already have a ton of money on this game. Very interesting line movement, but I can tell you guys – you know, the, the 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 NFL groups that I respect the most are on Kansas City. And mm-hmm. Bear, I already told your friend Kelly in Vegas, at Kelly in Vegas on social media, that I want to use Kansas City in that big survivor Ooh. contest in Las Vegas. Mm. And I know that, and I'll tell you guys why, everyone's going to be saving Kansas City because they play on Black Friday yep. and they play on Christmas. So the top two plays are going to be Seattle and San Francisco. I like to go against the top so plays. Why? I'm seeing all of our sharp groups on the Chiefs. I know they've got all this future value. I'd like to use them on on Monday night and hope one of those two teams loses on Sunday. Talking to Seattle, San Francisco. F- future value only matters if you're there. And with however many people <laughs> okay. are left in this thing, what what are the odds that this thing gets to, to Black Friday for Thanksgiving or Christmas? Like, I'm not opposed to that as well. Uh, yeah, I I used Seattle uh, week. Two and I used uh, San Francisco last week, uh, just because I, I I knew that they weren't wouldn't lay an egg and lose to uh, the Patriots and I, and I thought like depending on San Francisco's injuries how much future value do they have let me just get it out of the way now so yeah I'm a I'm I'm leaning either Chiefs or Jaguars this week I, I know using an 0 4 team in Survivor probably is never uh, n- never a strategy that people will abide by but they very easily could be two and two or even yep. three and one. So they're not your typical yeah. Drick 0-4 team in the Colts without maybe Jonathan Taylor uh, with, with maybe Flacco again, a quarterback against a, a bad secondary with any, at some point I would think that like the, the Jaguars offensive talent will somehow put it together. So that's my little survivor ramp. But Jeff, I know you want to get talk about the Chiefs here. Uh, I would not bet on the Chiefs to win this Uh-oh. game. I, I mean, the, have you, the, the, the Chiefs, um, are itching for a loss. Like they're, they're not playing good football uh, all over the field. Uh, starts a quarterback, right? Mahomes has had interceptions that we have not seen in his career. Now he's without uh, all his wide receivers, essentially, that he trusts. I mean, Sky Moore was in the game trying to catch a third down pass this past weekend. That's not where the Chiefs want to be right now. I don't, I don't know how they move the ball on a really good Saints defense. The Saints defense has played well this year. 
On the other side, the, the chief sort of defensive problem they have really one is at middle linebacker, and one of the Saints do well. They have a, a, a running back who's very good, who can get out in space, who can get on screens. Like, this feels like a spot where the Chiefs just have a tough matchup in this game. Again, John's right. Like, never count out the Chiefs, but they're itching to take a loss, and this feels like a situation where it happens on Monday. Like, the same team that has come back down to earth, right? They, they started really fast. They lost the Eagles. They lost last weekend. Um, I... Again, I told you that Chargers game bear was going to be as ugly as it was. I thought oh, yeah. it was going to be just as ugly as it was. Chiefs sort of survived with an ugly cover there. I, I just don't expect a lot of points in this game, and I will lean toward the Saints to cover this game. Survivor, I mean, I, I'm I'm obviously out, so I can't give you any advice on that. Yeah, I can see the future sometimes, and I could see like Monday around 10 o'clock, me texting you guys saying, why did I bet Derek Carr against Patrick Mahomes? But I'm going to bet Derek Carr against Patrick Mahomes. Uh, Chiefs are 4-0. and Saints are 2-2. and You could easily, those records could pretty easily be flipped and Saints are 4-0 and and Chiefs are 2-2. Two and two. It was a somewhat fortunate win against the Falcons. They didn't look great against the Chargers last week. And then the Ravens game was a toe and the Bengals should have beaten them. I mean, it's it hasn't looked great. You, you mentioned all the issues about, you know, the skill guys being diminished. Kelsey does not look like the same player. Um, so I, I'll take the points in Mahomes just is not, I think 38 and 44 is, um, uh, as a favorite of over a field goal, I think is the stat that's, uh, that's floating around there. Yeah. Just chiefs win these games by a field goal. I mean, they tend to win them, but they don't win them by, uh, by margin here. So I will take the saints and probably regret it. And, uh, bear, we will be watching Yankees Royals at the same it's time. Well, so that's, go Royals. Uh, fun time of the year with all these playoff games and, uh, yeah, boy, you're a Yankee fan. You're not, I know you have Royals. It's so bad. Gonna, it's, you're, you're not going to ditch our Yankees. It's are so I, bad. I am, I am rooting for the Royals. This is this guy over here. I, I, ha I have I have a Royals Padres World oh, Series exact goodness. at like ridiculous number. So yeah, I, yeah, yes, I am. I, I am. I am rooting for the Royals. I shouldn't say I'm rooting for the Royals, but I would not be disappointed if the Royals win. I uh, guys, I took a, tri a Chris Jones Defensive Player of the Year. Uh, this this week, it, like it sort of feels time maybe for him to win this. He's never won this award. He's a Hall of Famer. He's one of the best players at that position. No Aaron Donald. He might be the best defensive tackle right now. I know Watt and Hutchinson are doing the sack thing. Is, is that a good play, Barry? You think Chris Jones defensive player? He doesn't get the sacks though. Like that's what the problem. You get thirteen hundred. DraftKings. Yeah, I. I mean, he's at some point like if if the Steelers do not win as many games as maybe we think. Hutchinson, though, leads the NFL in sacks. That's going to be a problem if, if the Lions are 12 and He had, what, five. four sacks in the one game. Yeah, he had one the other night. I think he's at six and a half now. So, I don't know. I, I think that Lions defense is bad enough where he he may not win. I still think Watt's the favorite, but it, it's weird how you never hear, like, these lockdown corners, like, ever— ever uh, uh, Sertan, who's playing great this season. Yeah, yeah. exactly, for, <laughs> uh, for defensive player of the year, so— Anything else in any uh, any of the games that we haven't mentioned, uh, John or, or Will, that you want to get out there? No, no I, think I don't. Think, it. Go ahead, Will. I'm sorry. No, go no, ahead. go ahead. I think we I think we covered it. Yeah, I don't think so, guys. I think all the all the really sharp stuff that I saw, we, we went through all that already, and yeah, not not much else to say. I mean, the only other game I think of note this week, Cleveland and Washington. You know, all of a sudden. Jaden Daniels is, is kind of giving that Washington franchise a do-over. You know, they completely botched the RG3 situation 12 years ago, and now they've got another star quarterback, Heisman Trophy winner, second overall pick. Let's see how the franchise blows it this time. <laughs> but we are seeing a lot of money on Washington. Did see a sharp group take Cleveland when it was plus three and a half. Yeah. So that that's the only other game I think I've seen anything noteworthy on this. Wager in Cleveland. I get you have to wager on ugly sides from time to time, but they they are Yeah, that's not a bad it's, one. Oh jeez. They they're not good right now. Their defense is not as good as we as they were last season and Watson is just not good at football. Maybe maybe <laughs> yeah, no. No. Maybe, maybe. no, he's not. No. End of story. Well, maybe maybe for all the the DC fans out there, their their pain and suffering will uh will end and they'll they'll wind up making the playoffs and Daniels will stay healthy a win rookie of the year and uh, onward onward and upward for the uh for the commanders but uh, onward and upward here as well onto the uh, as we will segue on to our next segment another gambling group chat in the books John will appreciate you guys as always we'll talk again next week all right Barrett back from gambling group chat uh, I guess we're rooting for the Tigers to lose for yes. John are we, are we we are rooting we are rooting against the Tigers for we're rooting for the sports book. Is that what I have? I have, I have that well, right? Or just rooting yeah. for a friendship with John? I was going to say, I'm I'm rooting for my friend's job security. That's okay. what I'm rooting for. So I, I have a bone to pick with sorry, you before we get sorry, to, sorry, Detroit. to our, our best bets. 
the the fact that you are so giddy for your be- your favorite teams to lose over wagers to me is something that's just foreign to me. I just can't I can't get that. I'm a Yankees fan, but I hate this team. I, I get it. I'm I'm I get it. I'm a fan of teams that I do. Judge like, is great and so like I'm a Giants baseball fan. That team is the most boring to ever root for. I get you. I get it. And we're talking about a six figure one potentially. So it's like it's not like it's not like I have twenty dollars on, on. And you're not a hedger. Like you're not going to hedge this. There's no way to really. Oh, there's hedge no it way yet. to really. There's no way to really yeah. hedge it. So okay. Well, I, I just I just got to ride it out. And with, and with a couple of soccer results I've gotten in the last well, yeah, week or so, in, including including. Juventus scoring twice in the final 25 yeah. minutes down a man that, against that means uh, nothing to me. Leipzig. Yeah. To somehow. I don't know uh, any of that. I don't know any I, of that. I might, I might have had a, a Leipzig or draw against uh, Juventus oh. prior to it. And somehow Leipzig did not even get a get a draw from up a man and up a goal in the uh, in the second half. So uh, thoughts and prayers. Yeah. Big time thoughts and prayers. <laughs> Just, not good. It just sounds like nothing on the, my head. On, on the heels of Dinamo Zagreb scoring twice against uh, Arsenal in Champions League two weeks ago. Uh, this week, another uh, dreadful soccer result. That, as someone who is recently new to wagering on soccer, your, I, I don't boy, enjoy it. Put your put your boy behind the eight ball. Here. I don't. I don't it's enjoy wagering on soccer. I, it's it's not been fun. And it sucks. That was the only game that I lost, and it was just like ugh. Everything else went through, but. Yeah. I'm going to wager again for soccer for is it women's euros this summer. This summer we have women's euros. Yes. Let's go. Let's go. We're back on Should soccer. Be great. All right, guys, we're back with we my to get you what? involved in champions league though. I, I please. No, please. I think we're getting messages from our producer to move this thing along. <laughs> Let's get to my, my fade of the week here. Presented by DraftKings Sportsbook bear. I'm going to fade the Rams bear. The Rams I think are sort of done for the season. They're too injured. They're too beat up. We saw sort of that, that dead cat bounce, that first game with everyone was hurt. Fourth quarter uh, against the Niners. Against the Niners. <laughs> and then last week, it just wasn't competitive against a, a Bears team that, you know, is not 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 terribly good, right? That was a 24 to, to 15 game there. Uh, at the end, the Bears, the Rams kicked, kicked, kicked a field goal, didn't cover that game, didn't cover in the 31 point loss to the Cardinals, did not cover to the Bears. Uh, the Packers are coming to town. It's not a home field advantage for the Rams in this game. There'll be a ton of Packer fans there. Packers look better in the second half as Jordan Love got back, you know, got used to playing again. Uh, I think the Packers are a good football team. The Rams defense guys, 31 and DV away. Like, not, just not, they're not a good team right now. They're playing their butts off. They just don't have enough players to win football games, Bear. I think it's a pretty square play to take the Packers minus the three here, but I think the Packers are the better team. They're, they're off a loss in, in a sec- second half where they played well. I think the Rams are sort of done, Bear. Like, they're going to try hard, Bear, but I don't think the Rams will be competitive in this game, giving the Packers. Is this a good time to to buy maybe, I don't want to say super low, but lower than you would have thought on the uh, on the Packers, maybe to, to make the playoffs two and two, but you look at the schedule, Rams, Home Cardinals. They got Jacksonville in a couple yeah. of weeks. You still got the two. You got two with the Bears. Uh, you got a game against Miami. Like because that, well, think about it. so for nine right, and eight probably so, gets you in in the NFC, right? Sure, but you, so you're competing basically against like you know the NFC East, right? Commanders, Cowboys, Eagles. Are they getting one or two teams in? Right? Um, is 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 Seattle going to be a playoff team? And I think we we feel comfortable with only one NFC South team being in there. So you're just so, you know sort of competing. Are the Packers going to be better than Cowboys, Eagles, Commanders, essentially, mm-hmm. um, or the Seahawks? I think it's a good wager. I think they they can be better than those teams. Um, you know, loves injury. He looked better in the second half of that game. They looked more comfortable. So I think it's a good spot if, to buy low on the Packers here because if they win this weekend, they're sort of you know back in the swing of, of three, things. Three, yeah, three and two, three and two. Yeah. And, you're right. and they stole. They're good. And they stole those two games with, with Malik Willis. Like that's what you have to yes. do. With injured quarterback, so uh, Bear, let's hear your best bets for the week. Yeah, my best bet uh, presented by Drushkin Sportsbook. I hit on it in the gambling group chat. Uh, I went over twenty-seven and a half with the uh, 49ers team total. Um, again, Will ripped off the, the 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 recent history against the Cardinals. Put up a lot of points uh, in this game. Uh, Purdy's playing at MVP level. Uh, they've got basically all their weapons back, with the exception of, of CMC. Uh, with the short week game at Seattle. I like, I think they get up. I think they put points on the board early. I think they build a cushion. Maybe the Cardinals get a yeah. little bit of a backdoor. Yeah, but uh, I feel pretty good about the, the, the Niners putting up at least 30 here. I think in week one, I faded the Cardinals because their defense is really bad. And their defense continues to be really bad. Yeah. Like, like, like the Niners, are, I think, will score. The injuries, 
I don't think matters so much in this game offensively. They're going to run the football. Jordan Mason's done a great job. I like this play here uh, for you. It's a lot of points for the NFL, 27 and a half, but I think the Niners, four touchdowns. I mean, I think they could do that. Yeah, you, you would. You would. They might score in defense, so. too. Yeah, I'm always willing to take an offensive score. All right. All right. My, uh, my best bet presented by DraftKings Sportsbook is uh, the under in Monday Night Football, Bear under 43 and a half, uh, Chiefs and Saints. A couple things here. One is the Chiefs offense. Who's going to catch the football? I, they, they went through this last year, right? It's 2023 all over again. It's run the football. It's sort of protect the pass game. Travis Kelsey had a big week last week. I don't expect him to have the same week this week. I mean, who's, who's Pat throwing the ball to? Xavier Worthy, rookie still trying to figure things out. Is it Sky Moore? Is it Juju? Is it Watson? Like I, I just don't. Stephon Page. I, I, I just don't think that we're going to see the Collins. offense score a bunch of points in this game, right? I, I just don't think. I don't think. I don't think it's happening. The Saints' defense is is uh, fairly good this season so far. Uh, on the other side, I like some of the Saints' matchups in this game against Chiefs' defense, primarily Kamara against Bolton. What does that mean? That means run the football. That means screen passes. Not a lot of shots downfield. But but I think for this game, Bear, the Saints' offensive line. Is not it's not good. Chiefs defensive line playing really good football. So I think it's a combination of all those things for the under here. I think people just still think Chiefs are an over team bear, and the over has hit. I believe the Ravens game it hit, and I actually might have hit, might have hit uh, against the Bengals. But since then, it's not. I mean, the Chiefs offense has sort of taken a step back as these injuries have happened. So um, uh, I like. I think look, I'm Chiefs fan here. I, I think they might lose Monday night. I think it's, they're sort of, we saw last weekend, I call it a correction weekend. Seattle gets blown out on Monday night. It's a 3-0 team. Steelers lose as a 3-0 team. But Bills lose as a 3-0 team. It, it's sort of correction time. Again, the wrong word to maybe use for the Chiefs, but this is a weekend where a game where they could easily lose. Yeah, let down, let it's up. Not, it's not let down. It's just, it, 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 it's human uh, nature. I was just trying to explain this. It, it's hard to explain because the NFL is the best sport at sort of humbling you. Like when you think you're too high, it'll knock you mm. down fast. It'll knock you down so fast. I'm not saying the Chiefs think they're too high, but the case also to be made is they haven't played their best football in their 4-0. So right. um, it's a Monday Night Football it's game. Um, it's a great problem to have. It's a Monday Night Football game. They'll be up for this game. Um, and what a night for Kansas City. You have Royals, Yankees yep. in New York, though. So the they could have a situation play at the same time at the same facility. If the Royals were at home, right? Yeah, they, and it's literally it's, for those who aren't familiar. It's literally so you, right there. you would have like the, the share parking lots. They'd have to have the Royals game during the day, though, right? They, they couldn't put them at the same time. It'd have to be early. It'd have to early. be early. Yeah, you could, I mean, I guess you could do it. You could start it maybe at, four. Yeah, like five or something like that. And but with the tailgating, the Chiefs fans do. It'd oh, be yeah, they're there. It, it'd have to be like a one o'clock at eight. <laughs> it used to be one central, seven central, something like that. It would have been that would have been a, a oh, that would have been fun to be at. Can you imagine yeah, if they have the, the Chiefs fans? Today. Had to do like a, a entire day there, a lot of a lot of barbecue, sign, and a lot of alcohol. Sign me up. I know, that'd be fun. That'd be great. All right, there nothing, we go. Nothing there. like playoff baseball. I love playoff baseball. Even when my team's not in it, so it, every pitch is like so important. It's great. It's the best. It's great. We'll be uh, we'll be dialed into it over the next few weeks or so. Uh, Fox obviously with the uh, with the World Series and a ton of postseason baseball. So we definitely will be uh, tuning in, and we thank you for for tuning in to. Another uh, edition of Bear Bits Podcast. Appreciate everybody uh, downloading wherever you get your podcast. Apple, Spotify, subscribe to that Bear Bits YouTube channel as well. That way you can see our pretty helmets now on the set as well. Thanks to John. Thanks to Will. Thanks for making the time again, Jeff. Appreciate you as always. I love being here, buddy. I don't want to make the time. I like, I like no place this. I'd rather be on a Thursday than with my man, Jeff Sports, here in New York. Headed out to LaGuardia real soon to get to State College. And remember... Less you bet, the more you lose when you win. <laughs>